this week could not have gone better for Nate Diaz. Because as much as I hate to say it, the fighting and all that stuff, the canceled press conference, the missed weight, more attention was on this card than ever would have been had everything gone smoothly. What's up, guys? Laura Sanko here. Uh, man, whew. I am running on about three hours of sleep, maybe a little bit less than that, about two and a half hours of sleep and a lot of adrenaline. What an insane week. I uh, just wanted to, I guess, drop you guys my quick thoughts um, on, in particular, in this video, I, I want to talk a little bit about, about Nate Diaz and what this week, week, like, week was like for him, excuse me. Um, and also what it was like for me. So UFC 279 obviously just went down in Las Vegas and it was uh, an unusual fight week to say the least. The presser gets canceled for the first time in UFC history. And I don't know if you guys saw the, the footage, but it was interesting because the first issue was between Hamzat and Kevin Holland. But the issue that really got things uh, headed down the wrong direction and why they had to cancel the press conference was because of Hamzat and Nate and uh, from what I understand, because Tiki goes and got involved in Tiki, Tiki's a, a manager in the industry. He's been around the industry forever. He used to fight in the UFC, um, just kind of a guy that's been around forever. And I, he was back there trying to like just calm everybody down, but got kind of shoved into the middle of it. So I think when Nate's guys showed up and Tiki was talking to Hamzat, they thought he was kind of like taking his side. So that stirred up some more stuff. Um, so long story endless, the, the presser gets canceled for the first time in UFC history. And that was really just an omen of things to come. But I guess the big takeaway for me um, after the total dumpster fire of a weigh-in day that we had is that we we have possibly the best, most fairy tale ending that we could have had for Nate in this situation. You know, the whole narrative coming into this fight was either you believed either one of two things, either the UFC forced the fight with Hamzat on Nate, or this was a fight that Nate wanted and he just wanted to be done. Like, just, I don't care who it is. I just want to get out of here um, and be done with my contract. And one fight left on his contract, had to fight it out. So regardless of whether, regardless of what narrative you decide in your mind is is the correct one and maybe it's a mixture of both we we won't know because we weren't in those negotiations but um regardless of that this week could not have gone better for nate diaz because as much as i hate to say it the fighting and all that stuff the canceled press conference the missed weight more attention was on this card than ever would have been had everything gone smoothly so not only are way more eyeballs. I mean, the weigh-in show did like four times uh, what it normally does, if not a little bit more in terms of the live audience. I mean, the, the numbers in terms of the social media and the viewership were out of this world. So not only do you have more eyeballs on the situation, but in a crazy, crazy twist of fate because of this massive weight miss, Nate Diaz gets given an opponent that makes a lot of sense. Two guys who at one time, you know, were, were running the lightweight division. And what's crazy to think about is that they never fought before. It's wild to me that Tony Ferguson and Nate Diaz never crossed paths. Uh, but they did, they did last night. And for Nate and all of his struggles with the UFC, all of his struggles with the commission, um, for him to be able to go out like this, to me, was like the most amazing poetic justice I've ever seen. Cause you're talking about a guy who, and I think it's why people love Nate Diaz. He just refused to play the game ever, whether it was with the UFC, whether it was with the commission, whether it was just with society, whatever it is. And it's why people loved him and still do. He just refused to play the game. He's got a, a, you know, we did this list of um, most gangster fighters in the UFC and I put him number one for a lot of reasons, the obvious reasons, but to me, he's got like a, a code, a street code that very few people have these days, particularly in the days of clickbaits and social media and like trying to get ahead and trying to get views and trying to make a buck and whatever it is, 
he's a guy who has never strayed from his own compass, who has never changed what he felt was important about himself and about how he conducted himself. And a lot of times that caused Nate Diaz to lose. It caused him to lose when he said, I'm going to be open about the fact that I smoke weed and I'm not going to stop smoking weed. And he sat out for a very long time. When you think about the millions of dollars that Nate Diaz had to miss out on because of all of the cannabis restrictions and the times that he was put on the sideline because of that. And now because of Nate and because of Nick, we have completely different rules when it comes to CBD, cannabis, weed, whatever, that entire, that entire world. He changed that. He and his brother changed that for the UFC. You know, there was a time where it was like, oh, you know, Nate and Nick, they might pop for weed. Now we don't even think about it. We don't even think about it because it was something that they felt was right. It was something that they believed in and they weren't going to change who they were to simply play the game and survive and get ahead. So coming into this week, Nate's been dealing with months of difficult negotiations with the UFC, finally says, all right, Hamzat's the fight, whatever, we're doing this. The weight miss, he gets the appropriate dance partner in Tony Ferguson. Tony, to his credit, steps up, takes the fight. Uh, he had to think about it for a while, for a little bit, not in a way where I'm like, oh, he had to think about it. But I mean, that's a major change. So Tony took a little bit of time to think about it, took the fight. Um, Nate made a lot more money. I can't say how much, but a lot more money and deservedly so. I, I, I can't think of a better fairy tale ending for Nate Diaz. He gets the right opponent. He gets the win. He gets the submission. He gets the money. And now he's in free agency. But what I love about it even more is the comments that Dana made in the presser. You know, I love, I guess I love they're not, they're not leaving on bad terms. Like everything is right in the world. Nate made bank. Nate got a win. Nate got a submission over a real OG in that division. And by the way, I loved how he handled that post-fight interview with Joe Rogan. I'm going to go take over another sport, but then I'm going to come back. He, he left the bridge. He did not burn the bridge. And I think maybe some of us expected him to, you know, throw double birds at the UFC, but Nate's, Nate's no dummy. Nate's a smart guy. And he knows, at least it seems like his plan is, I'm going to go make some money. I'm going to go do my own thing. One can only imagine that that might involve boxing, might involve Jake Paul, who knows, but he's also launching his own promotion, Real Fight Inc. Uh, so clearly he's got some plans. He's got some big plans. Whether we see Nate in the UFC again, I think is a whole other question. He seemed to indicate that that's the plan. He's going to come back and chase that title. It's hard to say at his age. And if he does go out and if he does make the bank he's talking about making with his fight promotion, with potentially boxing matches, who knows, uh, will we see Nate get again in the UFC? I tend to think not because I think he's going to make a boatload of money and I think he's got a family and I think he's going to be at an age where he's just like, I did it. I did it on my own terms. I did it my way and I made the money I set out to make and I'm good with what I accomplished. I'm fascinated to know what you guys think. I guess that's the question. Drop your answers in the comment section. Will we see Nate Diaz in the UFC again? And maybe throw in there as a bonus. What do you guys think he's alluding to? Is this a boxing fight with Jake Paul? Is this something else? I mean, he mentioned a bunch of different sports. He mentioned jujitsu, kickboxing. Is he referring to his promotion in that? Who knows? I want to hear you guys uh, guess what the future is for Nate Diaz, both with respect to other stuff he's doing and the UFC. Regardless, I am so happy for him that he got the ending that he deserved. And I feel like we can all just slow clap for Nate Diaz.